Hello, N4HNH here. I uh, want to show you a couple of tips and tricks regarding the FT891 and operating on 60 meters. Um, so if you own an FT891 already, you know it comes with 60 meter uh, frequencies already programmed in. 60 meters is channelized. So channel 1, and it is memory 501. You can't control that. That's the way it comes in the radio. Um, so 501 is going to be channel 1 for sideband up through 505. And then at 506, uh, they start over again <clears throat> for CW. Now you may notice on mine that my CW uh, frequencies or channels are different than the ones for sideband. Okay, so all I did was, because it can be confusing, out of the box, any Yaesu rig for that matter, they uh, use the, uh, the center frequency as the channel. So really, even though we're using the upper sideband um, and uh, on this uh, particular frequency, and we want to be at 5.330.5, uh, the display by default, even on the sideband channels, is going to display the CW frequency, 5.332. And so, for example, 5.348, which is channel 2 CW, will show up as 5.348 here for sideband. So what I did was, I went into the memories. You can, you select this, the, the VFO memory button right here, which is what you would use if you were going to save a memory. And you can't save over these, but what you can do is edit. And you can go down here where it says tag and use alphanumerics. So you can see right there that the frequency it wants to display by default is 5.348, the center frequency, for channel 2. But I want to see it as the SSB frequency that I'll actually be received on on the other end, and that is 5.346.5. So I just used the alphanumeric tagging to go through and, and change it. See right there? To, to actually read out, instead of really, it's not reading out a frequency so much as it is reading out a alphanumeric tag that I put in there. So I added the, the SSB at the end. So that's one thing about 60 meters to understand on the FT60. Another thing is how do you tune 60 meters because you can't put it into AM mode. You can press the band button, you know how you long press it, and you can go up here and you can change it to AM here in the display, but it's not gonna change it. Um, because those frequencies are programmed into those particular memory channels and you can't change it. So here's my trick. Um, I have a memory tuner. So what I do is in order to get the memory tuner to at least tune it the first time, I'll go to the CW frequencies and then I'll go into the menu. And down in your menu here, um, I should have saved time and had this already here, but bear with me. It's, uh, there we go, keyer. See right now, keyer type, let me get there, let me focus that. So keyer type, which is menu uh, 4-01, is set at electrical, electronic key B. So what you wanna do is press the multifunction button, temporarily change that to off. And what'll happen then, let me go to the dummy load. What'll happen then is when you transmit, you'll just get a carrier, a strong carrier, uh, a solid carrier. So now what you do is you let that carrier be used by your auto tuner to, uh, to uh, set a, a tune parameters for that particular frequency. And what you can do, I'll go ahead and exit out of this, is go ahead and do that for each channel if you want to really, really narrow it down. And then what will happen is, is the next time you want to use one of those frequencies, um, you can just whistle into the microphone on the sideband frequencies long enough for the auto tuner to, to detect what frequency you're on and it'll tune it. Or you go back into the menu and do what I just did and use the CW channel to tune your, uh, your antenna. Again, that's assuming you don't have a resonant 60 meter antenna. So that's the little trick on that. Now, one other thing I wanna show you that can really trip you up, it did me. Um, there, there's not anybody on 60 meters right now, CW. I, I wish there were, I'd, sh I'd show you this in real time, but um, 
on the CW here, let's say that someone were w w on channel two here, they're sending CW. And I've got my, let me move it over here to the menu over here to the uh, CW area. So see, I've got my pitch set at 550. And you guys are familiar probably with my other videos about the, z the zero in button here. I even assigned it to my uh, A button here because I use it a good bit. And you remember how to do that is you just put it on any anything you want to assign to any of these buttons. Just find it in the menu, put the arrow on it, and then long press whichever button you want it to be assigned to and you'll get a double beat. So the zero in is assigned to A on my rig. But here's what I wanted to warn you about. If you're on 60 meters and you use the zero in, um, it'll mess with you because what'll happen is if the person that's sending CW on, say, channel two here is a little bit off frequency, the zero in will move the frequency enough to get you the 550 hertz, if that's what you had it set for, uh, is your desired side tone. The problem is, is when it does that, it will know the radio is going to consider it that you're um, you're out of band, you're, or you're out of bounds of the frequency you're allowed to transmit on, and it will look like you're transmitting. The red light will even come on, but you won't have. Uh, let me see if I can fake it. Yeah, look at there. See what it did? So I just pressed my zoom in button, and it it went hunting for a tone. And now it may think it's found one there, but watch what happens on the watt meter when I transmit. See the red transmit light is blinking instead of going solid. The radio is preventing me from transmitting on that frequency because it's not valid. So now I'm going to go back to my, press my return to memory button there. Now watch what happens. Let me get on, let me get on the dummy load. Okay, now watch the red LED. It's solid and indeed I'm getting my 100 watts out. So just be aware that if you use the zero in button on 60 meters and it moves a little bit to accommodate the station you're listening to being a little bit off frequency, it will also prevent you from transmitting. So this is one area you've got to be careful of. Um, yeah, okay, you know, you could uh, do the Mars mod on the radio and you'd be able to transmit there, but um, I don't want to do that. These radios have a three-year warranty, and so I've still got time left on this warranty, and I'm not going to do that. And it's not that big of a deal. Just when you're listening, you may want to widen the... Uh, I usually go down to 50 or 100. Maybe you'll widen it a little bit to uh, to pick up the station that you're listening to. Okay, just wanted to uh, give you guys a little insight into the use of 60 meters on the uh, Yaesu FT891 and a couple of pitfalls just to be careful about. And I hope you found the video informative and helpful. 73 from N4 H&H. &H.